Good morning from Los Angeles and good evening to those of you in very cool Athens and elsewhere in Greece. My name is Sharon Gerstel and I have the honor of directing the UCLA Stavros Niarchos Foundation Center for the Study of Hellenic Culture. Throughout 2022, our center will be offering numerous events concerning the Greeks in Asia Minor, their rich lives and ancient culture, which for so many was ended or substantially transformed following the massive population exchange codified in 1923. Our events this year include a large number of lectures, book readings, musical performances, and even a newly composed opera, Polymnia. Many of these events are being held in collaboration with our academic partners, including the Stavros Niarchos Foundation Center for Hellenic Studies at Simon Fraser University and the National Hellenic Research Foundation, as well as with our organizational partners, including today the Embassy of Greece in the United States and the Hellenic Society of Constantinople. I invite you to consult the events page on our website to find out more about happenings that might be of interest to you. I'm very excited about today's lecture on an extremely interesting and important topic. I want to personally welcome our speaker, Dr. Evangelia Balta, who is not only a very distinguished scholar, as you will hear from our center's associate director, Simo Zenios, but also, I would say, an activist. Many of you know of our center's very warm relationship with the ambassador of Greece to the United States, Alexandra Papadopoulou. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, the ambassador has joined us for many events and has given our center her warm support, her wisdom, and her friendship. I'm delighted to welcome our ambassador to say a few words of welcome before Dr. Simos Zenius formally introduces today's speaker. Your Excellency, the screen is yours. Once again, I'm delighted to continue our collaboration with the UCLA Stavros Nyanko Center for the Study of Hellenic Culture, and thank you, Sharon, for your nice introduction. As most of you know, this year marks the anniversary of the 1922 Asia Minor catastrophe, one of the central events of the last hundred years of Greek history and one of its most painful chapters. Many aspects of modern and contemporary Hellenism, its social history and culture, its urban life and the demographics of its population, its politics and current affairs, the national psyche, one might even say, cannot be fully appreciated without reference to the events that unfolded in 1922. The centennial of the catastrophe is indeed an opportunity to ponder the multiple ways in which this tragedy has shaped contemporary Greek life. It is also an invitation to reflect on and commemorate what has been lost. Homelands, individual lives, belongings, homes, and unique forms of collective life. The Greeks of Asia Minor constituted an integral yet distinct segment of Hellenism. Their culture was shaped across centuries from antiquity to the Byzantine times and the modern period. It reflected and combined local idiosyncrasies and dynamic cross-cultural exchanges, resulting in the unique outlook of the Greek communities of Asia Minor. Today, we will hear about one of the most noteworthy instances of cross-cultural hybridity in Asia Minor the rich history and culture Karman Lides, the Rome Orthodox Turkish speaking. For the most part, the Karman Lides settled in Greece after the population exchange of 1923. Their story offers a fascinating outlook from which one can study not only the historical events of the period, but such broader issues as the formation of nation states, the role of religion in the forming of ethnic and cultural identities, and refugee movements. It is also marked by remarkable cultural and linguistic phenomena, such as the use of Greek script in order to render a Turkish dialect, demonstrating thus the dynamic character of Greek letters literally. 
The topics are varied and complex. We're lucky to have Dr. Evangelia Balta, one of the leading scholars of Karamalidika studies as our guide today. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you, Your Excellency, for these thoughtful and rich opening remarks. It is with great pleasure that I introduce today's speaker, Dr. Evangelia Balta, to you. Evangelia studied history at the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, and she pursued graduate studies in Paris. She received her doctorate in Ottoman history at the Ecole Pratique des Hautes and she worked at the Historical Archive of Macedonia at the Center of Asia, for Asia Minor Studies, and she taught at the Ionian University during the first two years after its foundation. Since 1987, she has been a researcher at the National Hellenic Research Foundation, where she now serves as research director at the Institute of Historical Research. Her publications are numerous and it will take a separate meeting to do justice to them all. I mention only a few from those that are relevant to today's topic and are published in English. The 2010 Beyond the Language Frontier, Studies on the Karamanlis and Karamanlidika, Miscellaneous Studies on the Karamanlidika Literary Tradition, published in 2013, and in 2014, The Exchange of Populations, Historiography and Refugee Memory. She is also the author of three volumes of the monumental analytical bibliography of the Karamanlidika book. Her interests focus on topics related to the economic and social history during the Ottoman period and the culture of the Greek Orthodox population of Anatolia. In addition to her commitment to various programs in Greece, Cyprus, and Turkey, she has been invited to teach seminars for graduate students by universities in Greece and abroad. She's, the, she's a founding member of Inon Istoro, History of Wine, a scholarly group which has organized conferences on topics related to wine and wine production. She has also served as an academic advisor for the Museum of Olive and Greek Olive Oil in Sparta, the Museum of Industrial Olive Oil Production in Lesbos, as well as the Museums of Wine at the Hthima Haji Mihalis and the Hthima Yerovasiliu. She was the academic supervisor of the restoration of the Kaya Kapu neighborhood in Prokopi, Turkey. And since 2008, she has organized three international conferences on Karamanlidika studies. She has also conducted seminars on Karamanlidika studies at the annual intensive summer school on Kunda Island, organized by the Ottoman Studies Foundation, Harvard University. In 2013, she was made an honorary member of the Turkish Historical Society. And in 2014, she was awarded the Order of Merit by the President of the Turkish Republic, Abdullah Gül. The title of Evangelia's lecture today is Karamalides, Rome Orthodox Turkish speaking Anatolians before and after the population exchange in 1923. Evangelia, the floor or the screen is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, for the warm introduction. Hello and welcome uh, to all uh, those uh, viewing and listening uh, to this lecture. Thank you very much for your participation. And uh, I also address uh, my thanks to Professor Sharon Gerstel and Dr. Simos Zenios of the Center for Hellenic Studies, who invited me to participate in this series of lectures sponsored by the Foundation of Stavros Nyarchos. And now to the subject in hand. The topic Karamalides, as described by the conference's title, includes many issues, many questions, and uh, open matters for the research. In the 14 minutes lecture, I will uh, give you only some aspects of this scientific field 
which consists a part of a huge area of the Karamalidika studies. These are the principal points on which I will focus my speech. Who were Karamalides? Turkish and Greek positions on their own. Excuse me. I think it was accidental. Uh, I think it was accident. I think it was an accidental interference. Uh -huh. Okay. Their life in the Ottoman Empire, uh, their cultural heritage, their deportation uh, by the Treaty of Lausanne, their installation in Greece uh, and uh, elsewhere. In the interior of Asia Minor until the 1923 exchange of population, Turkish speaking and Greek speaking Orthodox Christian communities coexisted with the solid Muslim population of diverse uh, Turkic and Turkish people with Armenians, Kurds, Arabs, etc. From uh, the 1930s to 1950s, the Center for Asia Minor Studies in Athens conducted research and collect information on the existence of 81 room communities in the small triangle of land defined by Kayseri from the Kayseri, Nefsehir and Nigde. This is the Roman administration division of Asia Minor using even by the European travelers until the first decades of uh, the 20th century. This is the triangle um, of uh, Nefsehi Kaiseri Nigdi with the 20, uh, 81 room uh, communities found by the Center for Asia Minor Studies. This small area belong to the dynasty of Karaman Ogularu and became under the Ottomans the Vilayet of Karaman. So the term Karamanli means the resident of the province of Karaman. Parenthesis. Uh, I have to give you some basic information for the Center for Asia Minor Studies. This center, through the activities of Melpo Merlier, Melpo was uh, an Istanbulot, was uh, the sole agent of research in Greece that ventured to record the oral history of the room communities of Anatolia. The foundation aimed to register and save the data and documents that reflect the history and culture of Rome Orthodox settlements of Central Asia Minor. This is the map created by the center through the memory of refugees who came to Greece. This initiative was taken and implemented outside of the framework of Greek academic institutions. It had, however, the protective umbrella and the economic support of the French state since Octave Merlier, Melpo's husband, was for many years the director of the French Institute at Athens. I 
I have to say that I am very, very, I feel very lucky because I start my career working in this center before, before my studies in Paris uh, in Turkology. According to the, the research results of the center, 32 villages were Greek speaking and 49 were Turkish speaking in the geographic region of the Byzantine Empire, which was defined as Cappadocia. The main mass of Turkophone Orthodox Christian communities was concentrated in this area. There was nothing exceptional about the existence of these uh, Turkish-speaking Greeks in Anatolia, at least Greeks, that mean Christians, Rum Christians in Anatolia, at least until the end of the 19th century. Evidence proves that they have existed since as early as the 15th century, the pre-national framework of the polyglot, multi-ethnic and multicultural Ottoman Empire. At that time, at, uh, identities were based on religion. There were Muslims and non-Muslim Ottoman subjects. Therefore, the subordination of the Karamanlides to the Rum Millet suffice it not to uh, differentiate uh, them from their Grecophone fellow Christians, nor to the Albanian speaking, Slav speaking, Arab speaking, and other Orthodox peoples who were under the administrative jurisdiction of the Patriarchate of Constantinople. Here you see how the, the, the the research of the center uh, worked with uh, the refugees. This is some photos from the uh, 50s. The phenomenon of the Karamanli was not an unique and isolated one in the Ottoman world. There were were also Turkish-speaking Armenians who used the Armenian script to write Turkish in the Balkans, Slav and Moldavian Turkophone populations used Cyrillic characters to write Turkish too. The Franco-Levantini, uh, that is uh, the Greek-speaking Catholics, wrote Greek in Latin uh, in Latin alphabet, Frangohiotica. The Turkish speaking Jewish laborers published in Smyrna a socialist journal in Turkish with Hebrew characters in the beginning of 20th century, with which these Hebrew characters, they also wrote the Judeo Spanish language, Ladino, as a they spoke, uh, that they spoke, Ladino. Turco-Cretans used the Arabic alphabet to write their Greek language. In a world and an era where the language was not a criterion for determining people's collective identity, linguistic diversity had no political or even religious importance. Here you can see two religions, Karamanlidica books, an Apostolos in Istanbul, and the other, 
a psalter printed by the Bible Society in Athens in 1841. Here is two catalogues of armeno turkish literature, that is, Turkish written with Armenian script. And this is a title of a Francochiotica book. You can read with Latin characters the title, Meletes dia oles tis imeres tu chronu, Dia την νεότητα, Σμύρνη, 1943 or 5, I am not sure, 5. That means a book for the youth, printed in Σμύρνη, in Σμύρνα. In the years of the emergence of nationalism in the 19th century, the presence of uh, these populations in central Anatolia raised a question regarding the contradiction of the two structural elements of nationalism, namely language and religion. The abolition of the Millet system, which existed before, divided the people in two groups, Muslims and non-Muslims was accompanied by the emergence of the concept of the Turkish nation, which from the late 19th century was seeking a geographical foundation. The idea of the Anadolulu in Anatolian was formed and the inhabitants of Anatolia became the main population substrate of the Turkish nation because of the predominance of the Turkish language. In Kemal Atatürk's time, the idea of Anatolia as the fatherland of the Turkish people would be declared official Turkish dogma. So the Karamanlides, as a Turkish-speaking ethnic group, was incorporated into the Turkish national group. In the Turkish assessments at the end of the 19th century, the population group of the Turkish-speaking Orthodox Christians of Anatolia comprises and block Turkic tribes that converted uh, to Christianity. Hence, the characterization Christian Turks, Orthodox Turks, Christianized Turks, Karaman Orthodox Turks, and so on. For the nationalist historiography of Turkey, Karaman leaders are descended of Turkic tribes who migrated and settled in the territory of Byzantium before the Ottoman conquest or served as mercenaries in the Byzantine army and embraced the religion of their new masters, but not their language. These theses are repeated today by some even academic Turks although they bring no serious documentation to underpin them. Some, yeah, pictures, gravures from, uh, this is from uh, the books of Texier in the middle of 19th century. This is some Greek houses in Sinasol. And, Elenophon uh, village of Cappadocia. Papa Eftim, here in the photograph, developed similar arguments for the founding of the Turkish Orthodox Church in 1820. 
during the Greek-Turkish War of the 1919-1922, Papa Eftim, an Orthodox priest from Akdagmaden, a village uh, uh, near to Yozgat, that means uh, in the South Pontus, sought to establish a Turkish Orthodox Church. He aimed to provide a, a separate church, a patriarchate, for the Karamanlides by identifying them with the Turkish nationalist movement. By supporting Papa Eftim and his Turkish Orthodox Church project, Ankara sought to weaken and counter the Greek and foreign propaganda on the Turkish uh, uh, atrocities toward the Anatolian non-Muslims. I have to remind you that in the end of the 19th century, we have the, mass, uh, the massacres of uh, Armenian people. It was also, but it was also a way supporting Papa Eftim uh, a way of countering the Greek territorial claims on Anatolia, since the Turkish National Church demonstrated no unredeemed Greeks in Anatolia, but Christian Turks. Let's talk now about the Greek assessments. Fortunately, the Greek ass assessments, less in uh, recent years, except uh, some fanatic websites, are based on concepts on abs of absolutely unmediated continuities, swimming with the general tide of Greek national historiography. The Greeks define themselves based on the construction of absolute continuity from antiquity. Consequently, the linguistic otherness of this portion of the room population could not but be attributed to the application of force. The issue of the origin of Turkish speaking rooms were brought to the fore basically in the early uh, 20th century. The timing was not fortuitous. In these years, the Ottoman Empire had lost its lands in the Balkans and was restricted to Asia Minor. But I have to add that the issue of the Turkish speaking Orthodox Christians came to a head when both Greeks and Turks led claims to Asia Minor. From the mid 18th century, Karamanlides became the recipients of the policies of Constantinople and Athens. Under the prism of the Megali idea, the two national Greek centers worked to shape national consciousness among the non-Greek speaking Orthodox populations to incorporate them into the body of the Greek nation. Some uh, images from the life and the legacy of Karamanlides. Briefly, we traced the process by which the Greek and Turkish positions and policies were formed. If the sclerotic preservations of the collective imaginary of origin has been perpetuated, this is due to the difficulties encountered in studying the pre-Ottoman period in Asia Minor, 
there are no sources concerned with the invasions into Byzantine territory and settlements by Turkic tribes and nomads in the 20th and 13th, uh, 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 13th centuries. There were no sources for the period of the Turkification or Islamization of Asia Minor. The Ottoman Chronicles do not offer evidence on these procedures, as noted by the late Spiros Vrionis, and more systematically by Rudy Paul Lidner, who worked on the pre-Ottoman history and published many studies. Vrionis was the first who scientifically dealt with the Turkish thesis on the origin of the Turkophone room population in his excellent book, The Decline of Medieval Hellenism of Asia Minor from the 11th to 15th century. Both the Greek and the Turkish views on the origin of the Karamanlides are ideological cre uh, creations of an era. They were used to promote specific political aspirations. Today, historians cannot advocate these theories and project them in academic papers. They can used use them only as evidence of a bygone era. But the origin of the Karamanli Rum Orthodox population remains as historical problem and it will unfortunately thus remain. Here, as you see, it is a Karamanli inscription of a tomb. You see, the date, 15 Decembrio, they use the, uh, the, the, the name uh, in Greek, uh, the name of the months, 1832. It is uh, the tomb of somebody of Alasse here, some uh, Raftis Terzi Georgios. And please look the last, the last line. In Greek, all the other is in Turkish language, but uh, this inscription is finished in Greek. O Theos Sihorisi. This is the Karamanlidic language, a Turkish language with many, many words many phrases in Greek, especially all of this lexicon of the religion, uh, religious lexicon is table and Greek in Karamanlidica. Here is the Karamanli inscription of a, an Orthodox Church of Hagia Eleni in Sili. Uh, it speaks on the restoration of the church during uh, the, the date uh, of uh, the Sultan Mahmoud II. Second. Ten years ago, I decided to search the 15th and uh, 16th century Ottoman fiscal registers. You can see one page of uh, this source. Registers of the administrative, uh, administrative um, eparchy, ep uh, province of uh, uh, Kayseri were mainly the most significant number of Turkish speaking Orthodox communities were concentrated. I went back to these sources looking for the history of these communities in the years when the Ottomans conquered Central Asia Minor. I wanted to ascertain whether 
and to what extent the Christian communities exiled for their fatherland in 1923 existed during the early centuries of the Ottoman Empire. What was the profile of the Turkish-speaking Orthodox communities in the first centuries of the Ottoman rule? Yeah. Here we have uh, the name in this page, the name of the tax pay, uh, payers of uh, the, the village, Turkish-speaking village Zili, uh, of Kayseri, uh, the adults uh, and uh, their taxes there. Central Anatolia passed to the Ottomans 20 years after the fall of Constantinople. Normally, I have to give you some information what is this kind of sources. After the occupation of a province, Ottomans recorded uh, each population and tax corresponding to its wealth. In these official Ottoman documents, I could observe the, the structure of the people of Cappadocia. I was concerned not with enhancing origins, but with sinking the traces of the Christian population in as early sources as possible and studying the ad hoc pictures of them, which will help clarify the landscape of earlier periods. Briefly again, I will give you the results of these research. I attested to the unbroken presence of the Christian agglomerations and the continuous growth of their populations. This means that the local Christian people of Anatolia during the pre-Ottoman period of its history surely did not vanish into thin air. They lived on into their settlements in the 13th and 14th centuries since they appeared in the Ottoman censuses in the late 15th and early 16th century. The names of their inhabitants, of their taxpayers, were Greek and in some regions, Armenian, and included also Turkish names. And now I will make some comments concerning the names because the anthroponyms and uh, under, uh, directly point the ethnic, point out ethnic groups. For example, the name Agop, Ohanes, Kirkor, points to the Armenian population. And Nikola, Yanni, Alexi, Vasilios means to room population. Until now, there were, there uh, uh, uh. There were also, I found some uh, Byzantine names, such as Komnynos, Andronikos, Tsimiskis, Le Leon, Leontios. It was uh, easy to distinguish the ethnic groups of Rooms and Armenians. But as I told before, there were also in these Christian villages people with uh, names as Yahamur, Kaplan, Armaan, Aslan, Durmus, Kaya uh, Yad, uh, Hunda Verdikyar, Emir Bey, Murat, Aydin, and so on but never, never Mehmet, Ahmed, Suleiman, etc. That means the Islamic names. Sometimes these Turkish names accompanied 
by patronymics such as Lazarus, Theodoros, Vasilius, Evdokimos, etc., or the Versus. That means some colleagues before, uh, even in the end of uh, the 19th century, uh, colleagues, uh, some, some intellectual Cappadocian, said that uh, the names as, for, exa uh, for example, uh, Evdokimos, is a translation of the name, uh, 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 Murati is the translation of Evdokimos. Excuse me. Excuse me. Or Hundavedikar is the translation of uh, the name uh, Theodotos, Theodosios, etc. Uh, Bayram is the translation of uh, Pas uh, Pascalis. But how we can explain the name Yarmur, which means it rains, uh, uh, the Karyard, it snows, etc. Uh, or the name as uh, Kaplan, Tiger. Aide, we can say that Arslan, uh, uh, Lion, came from Leon. It is reasonable to assume that these names, Turkish names, uh, are special Turkish names, Paganist Tur Turkish names, are linked with Christianized Turkmen, uh, uh, Tatars, Mongols, etc. As generally, uh, Turkic tribes uh, which mixed of the local, uh, the, the, uh, because there are many, many Turkic tribes uh, which mixed in the region's local Christians. There are excellent studies which uh, have pointed to long-lived relations between Christians and Muslims in central Anatolia from the 11th century. We know that the Muslim and Christian royal families intermarried freely. We also have examples of conversions of the two parts, but it is extremely difficult or entirely impossible to find when and by what process Christianization occurred and which people or peoples became Christian. Several waves in the Turkish nomadic expansion, ex, expansion covered the region one after another, and several conquerors before Ottomans existed. Uh, Seljuks, Ilhanids, Karamanogular, etc. In the Ottoman sources from the 15th and 16th centuries, I ascertain something from the history of my refugee Turkish-speaking family. My maternal grandfather was called Alexius Muratis. He wasn't Alexandros. His baptismal name came from Aziz Alexios, Agios Alexios, a local saint of Anatolia whose vita circulated in multiple Karamanli publications. My grandfather's father was Murat, and this patronymic became from 1909 our family surname in Greece, pointing, of course, to our Anatolian origin. Karamanlides were also found in Istanbul and the Western commercial cities in the coasts. They emigrate from Cappadocia searching for a better life. Systematically, this migration started at the end of the 18th century. 
These immigrants founded guilds, associations, and societies, and produced their communities in the places they mi migrated and stayed in touch with their fatherland. Through their associations in Istanbul, Smyrna, these migrants concentrated on their local community social and cultural improvement, mainly by supporting the establishment and maintenance of schools. In this way, they contributed to urbanization and Hellenization of their villages by using the community as a mechanism of speaking Greek education. They rebuilt churches, helped low-income families, paid the salaries of the teachers, etc., etc. In Istanbul, they supported the publication and the distribution of the Karamanli books, newspapers, periodicals. As you see here, we have a Karamanli translation of Confucius, the religious book. And now this is one Angelioforos printed a newspaper printed by the American Board of Missionaries in, uh, in Karamal, but the same uh, newspaper was published also in Armeno Turkish and uh, in Cyrillic alphabet uh, uh, with the name uh, Zornica. In the other, uh, we have in the other place, we have the Anatoly, the famous newspaper of Evangelinos Misailidis. Uh, which circulated uh, about 50 years. Uh, its publication started from Smyrna and continued uh, to uh, until the end uh, of uh, 1923 uh, with the name Nea Anatoly, New Anatoly. This one. A Karamanli community in Istanbul has existed already since the 15th century. Sultan Mehmed II installed Cappadocian Christians, Rooms and Armenians in Istanbul after its fall. The history of the neighborhoods of Yedikule, Vlanka, Kumkapur, Samatya, etc and their Karamanli residents are related with this, with this deportation. Selim, Sultan Selim II also did the same after the conquest of Cyprus. It is not worthy to tell you that uh, the famous Sinan Mimar, Mimar Sinan, asked the Sultan to exempt his compatriots from the deportation. Mimarsina, the origin of Mimarsinan was from the village Agia Nargiri, Agirnas, behind the Kaiseri, eight kilometer, kilometers far from Kaiseri. He was a Christian child of Devshirme before his conversion. The to, uh, with these deportations, the two sultans aimed to repopulate the destroyed by the war, the war's lands. I paid special attention in my paper to issues related to the identity of the population that came to be called Karamanlides. My aim today was to cite 
the reasons that produced the theories about the identity of the Karamanlides, and mainly to point out that they were formed by procedures and rules alien to historical science. I anticipate that the anniversaries of the Asia Minor disaster and the exchange of populations will revive along with many other the issue concerning the origin of the Karamanlides. As uh, it is usually the case on anniversaries, various old light motifs are heard and written thoughtlessly as myths always hold their own. But it is best to know the few things about the identity and history of the Karamanli exchangeable people that has been scientifically proven up to now based on documentation. And in the case of the Karamanlides, as generally in history, the categorization of black and white does not apply. To close as time passes, I would like to be reminiscent of the fact that the Greeks of the newly established Greek state in 1835 did not know also who the Karamanlides were. I call to mind the comedy Bab Babylonia, written by Dimitrios Byzantios. Parenthesis, Byzantios uh, was uh, from Istanbul, and his real name was Dimitrios Aslanis, son of Hadzi Kostadis, Aslanis. That means Leo. Among the protagonists, uh, proto, uh, protagonists who were resident uh, in various parts of Greece and uh, each spoke the dialect of his area as uh, a Cypriot, uh, Cretan, Ar Arvanit, Echot, uh, etc. There was also a Karamanli, Kaiseri Savas Hadji Muratis. There is a scene where the uh, Ionian policemen, on hearing the language spoken by Kaiser Savas Hadji Muratis, which is in reality Turkish and corrupted Greek, calls him Paloturka, nasty Turk, and Yautovaftismenos, meaning baptized in yogurt. The adjective means not a real Christian. And he received the reply from Karamanli Hadjisavas, uh, I am not Turk, I am an Orthodox Christian, I am Hadji, and I am not lying. Dimitrios Vizandios describes the Karamanli identity in the best possible way in the early 19th century. This is a poem on the exchange of population written in Karamanli by a priest named Neophytos Economos. The book published in Thessaloniki after the exchange of population. A hundred years later, the citizens of Greece would again call the, uh, the Karamanlides, who came as refugees, 
γιαουρτοβαφτισμένοι εν τουρκόσποροι of Turkey seed and make many other dispersing remarks about their identity. Karamalides were driven out by the Turks as Rum Orthodox from their homeland, despite the growing belief that they were of Turkish origin. And on arriving in Greece as Orthodox Christians, they were for many years treated as second class Greeks due to their fact they spoke Turkish. As the third generation of a Karamanli family, I vividly remember in 60s many such soul wooden scenes. The teacher from uh, Palia Elada, that means the Greek, the old Greek, belittled the language spoken by the adults in our house, in our home, in our neighborhood, refuge uh, neighborhood. But for us, it was the most natural thing in the world for our grandmothers, our grandpa, to speak to us in Turkish or Ponding, since that was that they spoken in their homeland. This Orthodox Turkish speaking population, although lived for centuries in extremely poor land and it shared with other peoples of other religions and other denominations kept for centuries its Orthodox faith from the fall of the Byzantine Empire up to the first decades of the 20th century. It created a special culture that left a mark, its mark on the Ottoman and Greek world alongside the rupestrial churches of Yoreme and Ilhara. When fleeing during the exchange, um, these Orthodox You are muted, Dr. Volta. Excuse me? Please wait for comments Left until behind. the end of the lecture. left behind schools, churches, and splendid mansions and houses, several of which still exist today. They published both uh, a thousand books in Turkish with Greek characters, religious ones to begin with, and then various secular books. There was a proliferation of uh, popularized books on practical medicine, farming methods, accounting, and so on. Books were published on subject of general education and literary works appeared, mainly novels. It is not worthy that a Karamanli book was the first book published in Turkish language in 1718. Since the first book, Turkish book with the Arabic characters circulated in 1729. It was the Kitab Lugati Vankuli by Said and Ibrahim Mutaferika. We don't have uh, the time to reveal the impressive book production and the flourishing Karamanli press to talk about the people who worked for it, to talk about the enlightened, enlightened clerics and the educated and distinguished Karamanli personalities who became high officers in the Ottoman state. And uh, we need at least some sessions to talk about the adventure of the deportation 
and the painful history of their installation of Greece. Thank you. Thank you very much for your passion and for your participation. Permit me now to show you some old pictures of their settlement in Greece from uh, the Decenies, photos from the Decenies of 50s, from uh, the archive of the Center of Forasia Minor Studies. As you see, the most of these uh, settle, uh, agglomeration were from Macedonia. Macedonia received uh, the majority of uh, the Cappadocian and Pontic refugee population. So beautiful. Yeah, Nea Carvalli of Cavalla, refugees from Galveri, Carvalli of Cappadocia. And with this last picture, I finished my lecture. Thank you again. <laughs>